so I, since she's not listening, I can say, I've seen this show, because we're not supposed to have seen it here, right, in the United States oh. yet, but I love <laughs> oh, hooray! Thank so excited. you. So excited! So excited to have it coming. Yeah, it's we're excited to too. Great. Yeah, yeah. It's very good to have it going on BBC America. It's lovely, actually. The people are really excited about it. Good. Um, so, how do you would you explain the show to somebody who's never seen it? <laughs> oh, I would say it's a group of. Uh, uh, a group of mates in Cardiff, uh, in Wales, who hunt down uh, aliens and gather alien technology to arm the human race against the future. And it's a, a, a group, and it's sort of an informal, roguish group, uh, led by Captain Jack Harkness, who's an omnisexual 51st century ex-time agent. Well, you've got this down. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest show in the world. <laughs> That's what I would say. It's the most enormous fun. Well, I'll try not to ask all predictable. No, no, it's not predictable. You know what? No, it's not. It's just it's nice to be asked the questions, to be honest. Um, I was curious, uh, the Captain Jack character, did you set out to make a spin-off for him? Or you were going to do Torchwood and said, hey, let's put Captain Jack No, in. my understanding of it is that um, uh, he was purely a character in, in Doctor Who. And yeah. obviously, um, Russell T. Davis created him. Stephen Moffat wrote the first two parts that he was in. Um, and John Barrowman really came into the show and took it by the scruff yeah, of the neck. Really. Brilliant. You brilliant. You know him very well. Yeah, yeah. it was <laughs> immensely popular. Yeah. The character was and I think everyone kind of went, ooh, actually. The public just, the British yeah, yeah. public just responded to that character uh, in a way you would never have predicted. I think it was part of, he was part of the reason for that, you know, yeah, first season really success. Cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Along definitely. with uh, a great character called Mickey Smith, obviously. Well, you know, I, I, but, uh, you I, know. I've heard of him. I've heard of him. I've heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> He's trapped in a parallel world. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Um, trapped in that parallel writer's room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I think it was it, it was that, and um, and I know that Russell had uh, had had the idea for Torchwood uh, quite a while back, and um, but obviously but the climate in Britain really wasn't very sci-fi friendly until yeah. he brought Doctor Who back, and yes. I think that opened doors, yes. and then they said to him, "What do yeah. you want to do?" And and I think then putting Captain Jack together with this idea that he had about alien yeah. investigators, just kind of the two things really gelled, and so. Uh, yeah, but a lot of the credit there is, is down to, I mean, it's obviously a team thing, but a lot of it is down to John Barrow. John and Barrow. Just, he it, gave it charm, he gave it charm. Yes. Because it, it could have been done really sort of military-like. Mm. And he added a sort of cheekiness to it. Which he's got a twinkle, yeah. you know, which yeah. is so yeah. lovely. He definitely has a twinkle. Yeah, yeah he's got more than a twinkle. Quite, <laughs> but he's not quite, um, he's more serious, though, in Torchwood. But in Doctor Who, was sort of a little frivolous, yeah. especially at the beginning. I think it's very silly, kind in of. Season, yes, yeah. absolutely. And I think yeah. in season one of Torchwood, he's, he's more serious for a reason, which is that he has this issue, which you yeah. hear about at the end yeah. of the first episode, which he's struggling to come to terms with. With, and he's he's searching for something. He's searching for for how he uh, deals with this. Um, but then uh, come the end of season one and going back into Doctor Who, that's resolved. Right. Um, and so in season two, which we're filming now, I think he's a little he's a little more you know Doctor Who Jack, if you like. He's lighter and flirtier and, and fun, and he's clear he wants to be there. You know, so. But Torchwood is a lot darker show, so yeah. more serious to write for than say writing for, for Doctor Who. Yeah. That's a little lighter yeah. version. Yes. I think there's moral complexity right. and, and the issues of being human, the issues of being, living in a city and modern society and all that kind of stuff. That's what Torchwood was created you to investigate, those more adult Yeah, issues. you can kind of go with adult, adult themes that you can't really go in the younger show. And not just adult themes as in violence or, or sexual stuff, but really sort of delving into the, the moral stuff and the dark side of humanity as mm -hmm. well. You know, really understanding what it is to be human in the, in the 21st century with all the problems and temptations and, and things that are going on around you and just living day to day and not only living day to day but then having to to defend the earth against aliens and, and yeah 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 yeah, yeah yeah to top it off you know so it was really i think you know in the younger show you can't really you can touch on it but you can't really do that you know with the, with the kids the villains are more right. just they're, they're villains whereas in this one there's a lot more complexity you follow, well. and also you follow the characters that are in each right. show really and it's not i think doctor who does uh, brilliantly at dealing with complex issues and it's not to say it doesn't deal with complex issues but i think it's um uh i think Torchwood, you can go into into murkier corners and you look at you know i think i think noel's episode combat really really deals with that that actually 
you know, it's not about the weevils, it's about what the humans do to the weevils, yeah. really, which is the issue. It's okay. like, how do we deal with the aliens? What do we do? Whose responsibility Yeah, it's really that? a commentary on, 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 on humanity. You know, like I yeah. said before, it's like, you know, it seems like with the way we're, you know, even as a sci-fi show, it touches upon the reality. It seems like we're the race in the universe that would find aliens and decide to hunt them. Right. You yeah. know, <laughs> oh look, a beautiful alien! Kill it! Do you know what I mean? And it's kind it of... Multiplies, a, yeah, <laughs> before it's... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's really really a com more commentary on the, on the humanity than, than the actual aliens themselves because the weevils, the sympathy really turns for them in that one and you actually feel sorry for them. And Doctor Who, I mean, being such an icon from, mm. you know, in England from, from kids who yes. watched it and have grown up, has there been, uh, how are people responding to this the spin off to the, to the new show. Very well. Uh, very well, as far as we're, we're just making the show. To be honest, no, we're busy making the, the show. We just, uh, no, no, exactly. No, no, we've been here hours and, you know, we haven't been assassinated. So, you know. Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I, I don't know, to be honest. We had great um, great uh, viewing figures. We had great reviews in the press and above and beyond that. We've, and we got commissioned for a second series. So, well, you know, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the kind of big thing. And, and certainly uh, the response on the street seems to be seems to be very good. I think yeah. it's. Um, uh, it's a joy to work on to be honest it's because it's also it's very unusual there's not um there hasn't been a tradition of sci-fi shows on air really no. uh in britain you know we've looked to all the american shows yeah. to be honest um so it's we're kind of um we're hope, sort of claiming that territory mm -hmm. back a bit for mainstream yeah. british audiences yeah, yeah. um so that's been that's been great you know well even here you know it's been a tough haul until very recently i mean a lot of mm. sci-fi shows you know heroes here really breaking through and you know yeah. getting emmy awards and things yeah. which yeah, before yeah. sci-fi was like you know we're not looking you know that's the yeah. guilty pleasure and we don't really pay attention to that it's so. interesting because it's also about how you handle science fiction ideas and i think what heroes does brilliantly is it handles it in a very character driven mainstream way so you're using complex ideas but you're telling them through character stories as opposed to kind of yeah. slightly um, slightly harder science fiction which, which is, is a yeah. great segue to where I was going thank you oh it's a I pleasure appreciate that. Um, so <laughs> I wasn't looking at your notes what, I yeah. <laughs> um, let's kind of run down the cast and, and mm. the characters and just you know, give me a couple words um, and we'll, we'll start here with um, I, I mispronounced the names it's Kai right who plays Reese yes 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 Kai Owen yeah, yeah you didn't okay. mispronounce it it was spot okay. on so tell me about. Give me a couple words on Kai. Oh, uh, well, Kai. The you mean Reese the uh, the character? Well, give me each. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about actors. Oh, <laughs> no, Clark. Um, uh, okay, then tell me. What? Well, uh, give me a couple words on on, on uh, Reese. I would say on oh Reese is um, generous, kind, supportive. Um, yeah, I'm generous, kind, supportive. I would say. Yeah, yeah. very supportive. He goes for a long suffering. Stage. Yeah, <laughs> I would say. He goes for a bit of a stage when he feels a bit yeah. cheated, you know. But yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's very, very supportive. Yeah, yeah. And you're not going to tell me if Kai's really like that in real life. Oh, we can't, we'll we can't, can't comment on. He's not. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what I would part. say? I would say genuinely about the whole cast. There's an umbrella <laughs> answer to that. They are a delight to work with. They are. I'm not just saying that they are absolutely brilliantly professional, but they are such fun. And they get on. They have such a laugh on set. It's such an it's such a joyous set to be on. Um, and uh, they have great chemistry on and off screen, and you know. But who's uh, most like their character? Before I go. God, that's so difficult. Really? Well, really? probably. If you had to say anybody, you know, I'm going to say. Yeah. 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 I would say John Barry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I was well, grinning straight away. Well, he's I'm definitely going. made. Yeah, I think he's had a lot of influence, hasn't he, on yeah. how the character? Well, you right. Yeah, and you, yeah. and and um, what's lovely is that when you've got somebody who is so. Perfect casting, and you know, I don't know whether so. There's already, but actually, yeah. he's like I can't imagine anybody, anybody else in the world playing that character. I wouldn't want anybody. He is so brilliant at it, and he's such a joy to write for and to be around, and he's he's so creative and brilliant and fun. Um, that um, yeah, he, he influences the character and, yeah. and vice versa. I think <laughs> really, I think it's, you know. All right, how about Yanto? Yanto, the character, yeah. I would say. Um, uh, <laughs> I'd say of all of them, probably Yant uh, Gareth is probably least like Yanto. So, although yeah, Yanto has a very dry sense of humour. Um, I would say Yanto, well, the first season, um, secretive, really, would be the big thing. He's, yeah. he's buttoned up, you know, deliberately buttoned up. Uh, the buttons come a little bit undone done in season two, I would say. <laughs> oh, look forward to that. <laughs> yeah, some undone buttons for Yanto. See, that go across yeah, the net. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> How about Toshiko? Uh, Workaholic. Uh, to Shiko, I would say it will in one or two words. Um, she's searching. 
to she cope. You know, she's she's searching for. Uh, I'll tell you, no, dedicated for Toshiko. And she was, well, the actress was in a Doctor Who, was it the same character? Same character, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have our um, local PBS station shows that they are at that season of Doctor Who. Okay, so yeah. the other day and went, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, no, she's called Dr. Sato in that, yeah. yeah, yeah. Same we always joke that um, uh, that was the day that, because she's a medic in, in mm-hmm. that episode, we always joke that... Uh, that's the day when Owen had a hangover and uh, she had to go and deal with his problem and there's always the banter between them going, you were hungover that day, I had to go and be the medic. <laughs> I had to cover for you. Well, along those lines, so uh, give me Owen. Uh, Owen, I would say, uh, in season one, I would say uh, trouble. That's and I would it. say Byrne is not troubled at all, actually. <laughs> I would say he's, you know, he's absolutely delightful. Um, uh, troubled and, and passionate, actually. You know, he, he's the equivalent to, to all the Jack and Gwen, and, and uh, all of them, I think, are passionate about their jobs and about the, about doing the work. Um, and so Gwen? Human. Oh. And she's kind of the audience point of view. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. She's yeah. the yeah. newcomer and that. Yeah, and I think that first episode is so structured from her point of view, so brilliantly structured from her point of view. Mm-hmm. She's our way in physically and emotionally. You know, you're with her on her journey through that first episode. You're introduced to the team from her point of view. And then it kind of broadens out from episode two onwards to be more of a, a, a kind of a, a team show. Well, and I think she hits that interesting moment, too, of the woman who has to cope with a job yeah. and still expected to be the woman. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. Other, oh, as, yeah. as much as, you know, Reese is, you know, we'll do the laundry and all of that, yeah. she's still expected to carry on and, and have that relationship. Yeah. And that's a tough, that's a tough spot to be. Yeah, and she, you know, she has the most human reactions throughout the series, and she kind of makes a mistake by having the, the thing with Owen and, and all that kind of stuff. But and she it's, also, it's she also helps them get their human, re- the team. Yes. Yeah. She's the, she's the, she brings um, the human voice to the yeah, team. Yeah, you said actually earlier, morality. Yeah. Actually. Is there an indication of how long the team was supposed to have been together before the show picks up? There isn't in, uh, no, not on screen. We, we kind of have, have a, a sense. Y- y- yeah, but I'm not going to commit myself, no, because I'll then I'll be, in, in two years' time when we change our minds. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I can see that. It's, um, it's been a, it's I mean, a, it's a while. It's a history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Together yeah, before yeah, she yeah. comes into the picture. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they've been together a while by, the, by that point. Um, and she, so you want, she told me who would most associate. Um, talk a little bit about... What would you, did you just say, sorry? About who, you, who was most like their character. Who's yeah. the easiest to write for? Who, what character do you like, or do you like to write for the most? Well, I only did, I only did um, one. I would say, for me, for me, it was, for me, it was Gwen. Yeah. I mean, I would say Jack's probably the easiest to write for, generally. Because yeah. you kind of, his character is so defined, the others are kind and of... And you can go anywhere, you can say all the yeah. outrageous things That's with true. Jack. Yeah. All the yeah. stuff you'd never <laughs> say to anyone. Whereas yeah. other people are still finding their way, but I think for me, it was Gwen, because I really like the sort of, um, I really like the sort of, uh, the domestic stuff. Mm-hmm. You know the, the the family stuff, and you know a lot of shows that I like. I always like when they go home and they have to deal with the the problems, yeah. the, the consequences of everything that's mm-hmm. that's gone on, and you know the the husbands that have been left behind and all that kind of stuff. Because that's that's the real world. You know we all don't go out and fight superheroes, but we all have to go out and do stuff. And you know sometimes you you, you don't get home at the time you should, and all this kind of stuff, and you have to then go home and deal with all that sort of you know the consequences of your actions. And I, I like that kind of stuff. Well, actually, Noel's being modest because he does go out and fight supervillains. Actually, most days. <laughs> most days, yeah. yeah. I just came back this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't have that tattoo oh, last night. No. supervillains around here for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Again, you will have no trouble to, to do that. But, you know, and it's interesting, too, when you say along those lines, is that not only on the extra level, it's sort of like police officers and military people who live this adrenaline day, mm. and then you come home, yeah. and the partner's going, but the dishwasher's broken, and yeah. why aren't you concerned? And I think like, that's, I almost yeah. died, and yeah. you were... I dishwasher. think that's really fun, and actually, the, really, that's the whole point, when you get to episode six, which is uh, Countryside, I think that's perhaps that whole story is geared toward that moment for Gwen. But it's actually too scary, I can't watch it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love that episode. Andy Goddard, who directed that, I think did such a good oh, job. Oh, it's Brilliant. such a mini horror movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. really, really. Yeah. It was great. Really I thought, I, I'm glad, you know, it's, it should be scary, you know. and that's um, but, but, but really, the whole point of the story is to get to that emotional point for Gwen, where yeah. it's like, she can't tell Reese, yeah. you know, and she has yeah. to seek solace somewhere else, and it's not necessarily the right thing to do that she does. Uh, but it's very human, you know, and she, she kind of makes mistakes. So I think that's also the thing when you talk about the difference between shows. I think when we talk about being more adults, it's actually... In, in this show, our characters make mistakes, mm-hmm. you know, and they are human, and, and actually they go on journeys that are... Um, uh, 
very complex. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm not finishing that sentence well at all, sorry. No, uh, they're, they're I, actually, no I, th- you know, I totally see where you're going. I think that, that you know, we, we've allowed our characters to go into corners where they've made errors, and, you know, and, and we were talking about really, in terms of the first season, really it being the, the kind of umbrella theme um, was the most dangerous thing about Torchwood is Torchwood, the temptation. Mm-hmm. You know, for all yeah. of them, all their stories are leading up to really that final episode. Um, where it's about temptation, it's about uh, how can you live your life, how can you see all these things and still do, and save the world and do the job and and still be human and still live your life, you know. And so it's um, you know. And I just on the side note to say the the production values are so amazing. The oh, I'm glad hub, you say that. Especially, it's just oh. it. I can't imagine how really big any of that. Do you know really what is, it is? The, you insane. walk on that set, it's brilliant it's not I mean only the upper level is CG mm-hmm. so so when I say the upper level the level above the boardroom mm-hmm. so oh, but everything from the boardroom down it's is built. physical built. And, and, and it's a 360 degree set wow. so it's completely walled right. in so you walk on there and you everything is it's beautiful work by by Ed Thomas and also by Julian oh. Luxton who's oh. who's done some amazing work you know they are it's brilliant yeah. it's and and it's great and and it was one of the reasons we did an episode like cyber woman you know was to yeah was I mean, to a just complete bottle lock shop in it. Yeah. there locked down yeah. and it was you know it was scary and and you weren't bored with it i mean it wasn't like oh god they're still in there kind yeah. of. there's so many you know it's sort of you feel like there's these nooks and crannies and things happening that you know in the room it's yeah. just architecturally really interesting too and the director's book love it. there's a fantastic yeah, yeah absolutely there's a fantastic story behind it as well you know it's a building with a story that it you know if you talk to to the the designers they're like oh well yeah you to be a train station connecting the three Torchwood uh, branches, yeah. you know, and all that. And so that's why the writing's on the wall and everything. It's like a Victorian train station that's been converted, and you know. So yes, we yeah, and there are more more nooks and crannies to come. Yeah, and it adds, it just it really sets the tone, I think, for the yeah. whole for the show, just the lighting and the look of it. Mm. Yeah, I'm really pleased you say that actually, because I think it's um. Uh, I, I think that's right. I think everybody worked very hard at that. Richard Stokes, the producer, it, it worked very hard to get that level of production value in there. And we find when we go to talk to people outside the UK, it's it's you know people comparing it to CSI and that kind of level of production. So you know we're, we're oh absolutely. Well, to me, that's the funny thing, and certainly no insult to how they put Doctor Who together. I know it's a different look. It's but a different, yeah. Torchwood looks huge on all levels. It just it looks much more cinematic. It's the aerial okay. shots and stuff like that. Just, and the yeah, yeah. things yeah. like that. Yeah. And I think I, I feel like. They're, there's maybe more actual location shooting. I know you guys do something. No, there's like that. less. There's the more in Doctor Who than there is really? in Torchwood, it just so you know. Feels you should go and tell Richard Stokes that. Because he's over there, he's a producer, and he would be so pleased that he's that he really should. Make sure you speak to him before he goes. Yeah, it just does. It has I a think really it's stuff like, I think it is stuff like the establishes, you know, the area yeah. shots and all that kind of stuff. It gives it a real sort of, like we were saying, sort of keeping its brilliant Britishness, but it gives it a real American feel. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of the. A lot feels what you want. Yeah. No, we do. I think. I think. But we're talking about mythology, and actually, a lot of our, yeah. a lot of our television yeah. has been mythologically American. And actually, we want, we really wanted to make a show that felt that made British. Uh, a lot of British filmmaking television has been kind of kitchen sink and, yeah. and very kind of um, dour representation of cities and we were like no let's make a sexy city show yeah, that exactly. you want to go yeah. and, and you, you know. see a good shot of it and you're like wow that place looks cool like as we for years have watched stuff like Angel and gone mm. they've done big shots of LA and you think I want to go there yeah. do you know what I mean and now <laughs> you we, it. Well, you know what? And, and they're doing torch with, we're so proud because they're doing torch with yeah. tours now you can do an official torch well not a BBC torch tour but you know They'll take you around and we're like, but that's that great. Exactly you know? We want people to go, wow, this place looks really cool. And actually, the, the city as a character is very, well, very it is. important. And the that is, it's the Millennium Center. Yeah, it is. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. a beautiful yeah. backdrop, yeah. Mm, you know, yeah. when they're on the air. It's just, it, it looks, interestingly enough, it looks sci-fi. It yes. looks futuristic. And at the same time... I think know, that's, a, that's a credit to Russell's, Russell T. Yeah. Davis's eye, that he sees something and thinks, actually, that, what's under there? You know, what's <laughs> under that monolith? <laughs> and he is just, he can spot... Love he it. can spot things that are ordinary but extraordinary in the same moment and I think that is a is a work of genius that thing of, of you know making that beautiful sculpture into uh-huh. an invisible lift yep. you know and then going down beneath and it's it's just brilliant I love it and while we're praising the production designers we have to say Jack's coat is it's a great coat isn't it yeah 
Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Selling yeah. Them, you know, for winter, the winter collection. <laughs> uh, absolutely, with the stripes. Yeah. <laughs> and that that shot you guys use of the of them all sort of walking forward and his coat sort of flapping, yeah, 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 great yeah. blue yeah. tone to it and all that. Is just yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You've really <laughs> got to talk to Richard because he will just. <laughs> oh, it's just. <laughs> and I don't know. I'm one of those people that notices all those things too. So I don't know if every. I think you know. I think everybody does on some level. Really. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It adds to that tone. It really sets. And right. they were very conscious decisions on our yeah. part to kind of give it that that glossy cinematic feel. Yeah. To, and to, to kind of make, uh, hopefully make it feel epic, you know, that, that, that it's not sort of small and in one house, that it's actually got the scope of a city and a country and you know, yes, all that kind of like stuff, that. you know. So. I said that time. Okay. Um, so <laughs> we'll talk about, I don't know if you have thoughts on um, American audiences. You know the show's a little bit more than we would be allowed to do on network TV, this nudity language. Yes, and but less than you get away with on cable. I, mean, I think, you know, there's more yeah. There's more sex and bad language in The Wire or The Sopranos true. than there is in Torture. Sex in the City. That's very true. No, it's very, very true. But network television, if they were to air this even sci-fi channel, would have to be cut quite a bit. Yeah. To, now, I understand BBC America doesn't have to No, they're that. not. They're not cutting it for it. language or contents, no. I think they're cutting it a little bit for time, for about two, two minutes yeah, or something. Yeah, your time's different. Yeah. Um, and, the, and this is a really hard question to ask because I don't want it to say. They have it. I don't know how to say no, that. No, you can say it. You can say it. What I wonder is, you've got this American audience, you've got this guy sitting in the middle of Kansas who's used to watching Captain Kirk and Star Trek yeah. and all of this, and he's going to see Captain Jack, yeah. who is outwardly flirty with men, women, aliens. Yeah. Welcome to yeah. the 21st this. century, man. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, are they going to buy that? I don't know. I think it's... I hope that character has such fun and joie de vivre that actually, and the way John plays it, I hope that with, it's a character you want to spend charm, time yeah. with. You know, it goes back to what Noel was saying. Yeah, yeah exactly, charm. charm. But you know what? I mean, you know, obviously we want to get as much fans and people to be fans of Torchwood, not just Doctor Who, but Torchwood mm -hmm. as well. But you know, if, if people like that don't buy it, they need to, you know, they need to get into the 21st century. Cause, <laughs> you know, I think that you can show sci-fi, like we've said, sci-fi shows a lot of the time have been sort of commentaries on tolerance. Yeah. You know, Very much. you know, races and religions and all this kind of stuff. Why should sexuality be the last taboo? You know. I think I mean? yeah, and and uh, you know, American sci-fi television has got the greatest precedent of all with the interracial kiss with Captain Kirk yep. in Star Trek, yeah, yeah, you know, it's yeah, like, yeah. there's nothing, uh, this is not more shocking than that, you know, it's, it's But that like was banned at first. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> but, you know. But, yeah. but uh, do, do you know what I mean? It shouldn't stop at, it shouldn't stop at sexuality and, you know, there, there are people that, there are men that like men and women that like women. I mean, Bible Belt guy can just, like, you know. I think there's surprisingly yeah. little, yeah. there's surprisingly little sex in Torchwood. It's with, it's a very, it's, it's a show it's where the characters are, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's like, I think there's maybe three sex scenes in the entire series. It's surprisingly low when you look at the actual, I think you know. that they're all crammed though in the same few episodes. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of episodes. Well, probably. obviously, episode two is, you know, but that's, a, you know, that's, a, that's one of my. I think there's three in episode two. <laughs> <laughs> there's only one sex scene in episode no, no, two. No, no, it's no, one, it's but it's a memorable one. <laughs> I think a lot of it is very, um, it's quick. You know, there's yeah. little comments, especially a lot of Jack stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throwaway comment. Yeah. That you go, did he just say that? You yeah. know, it's, it's the line Jack has in. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, which is a brilliant line. I love that. But it's actually the thing Jack says in episode two where he says, you people in your quaint little categories. And that's what torture's about. It's like, for Jack, this is just not an issue. You know, he's omnisexual. He's been 50th yeah. century. You know, Stephen Moffat, one of the Doctor Who says, you know, he will shag anything with a zip code. You know, that's it. It's <laughs> absolutely. He just doesn't have those barriers, and I think that's, you know, as Noel was saying, about tolerance. It's about yeah. equality. You know, but not in a worthy way. It's about like uh, celebrating life and enjoying life, and in, in every sense, you know. And saving the world in in the meantime. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>